So we're now going to come to the first model game. Uh, just to give you an idea of some of the concepts behind the dragon. Now this is a very exciting game which just shows you the potential that the dragon has to smash up your opponent. Now this is a game I played with the black pieces against uh, Christopher Dorrington and it was played in uh, a rapid play game, the British uh, Rapid Play Championship. So we only had 30 minutes each for the whole game so not a great deal of time. But um, I, did, I was able to unleash a vicious attack and uh, I think it's worth showing you this kind of uh, potential that the dragon has. Uh, now I know Christopher Dorrington at the time was probably only about 2200 strength but he now has just got an IM norm so he's um, a very talented player. Uh, so let's go through the moves and get on to the interesting position. So e4, c5, knight to c3. So you have to be aware of these move order tricks that your opponent can employ. This is quite a crafty way of trying to, as I mentioned in the introduction, avoiding the Dragodorf. Okay, I went knight to c6, and now my opponent played knight on g to e2. So, an interesting idea here. Um, so, knight to f3 is normal, but knight to e2 is also um, quite a well-known move order trick. Now, black does have the possibility of going e5, but again, this is not in the dragon repertoire, and white can get a good hold of the d5 square now by playing knight to d5. Um, so after knight on g to e2, I continued in dragon fashion, pawn to g6, pawn to d4 was played, pawn takes pawn, knight takes pawn, bishop to g7, and we have entered the mainline dragon. So white now decided to defend his knight on d4, bishop to e3, and I just played pawn to d6 here. Um, knight to f6 is also possible. I was a little bit worried about if I go knight to f6, knight takes knight and then e5. So I decided to play d6 first to stop this possibility of going e5. So d6, queen to d2 was played. Now knight to f6, pawn to f3. And this is one of this is the main line dragon position. And after we go through these introductory games, we're gonna jump into the main line theory because I think it's most important for any of you out there to first of all learn the main line so you don't get smashed off the board. And um, this is a very interesting position because basically white's going to castle queenside and throw everything at the black king while black's going to castle kingside and throw everything at the white king. So just because players are castling opposite sides of the board it makes the game extremely interesting. And I think Fisher um, used to play this and he just said when you play against a dragon all you have to do is push your h-pawn up the board, put your bishop on h6, sack, 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 and then it's checkmate. Um, which he, he basically used to do in all his games. He used to just smash his opponents off the board. But this is quite a long time ago, and Black's now found ways to get active counterplay against a number of his players. So after queen to d2, I played... After f3, I played bishop to d7. Um, I'm going to recommend Black Castle's queenside in the theory section. The line actually played here is slightly dubious, but we will have a look at it as well. But it's slightly dubious if White knows what he's doing. It's a gambler's choice. But as it's half an hour game, I thought I'd play this move. Bishop d7. White's castle queenside. So immediately going for some action. Rook to c8, a common idea in the dragon. We have this half-opened c file uh, towards White's king. So we nearly always put our rook on this open c file. Okay, the Chinese dragon is... Um, uh, one line where we actually put our rook on b8 but we only put our rook on b8 when the white's bishop is on c4 so rook to c8 common idea king to b1 a useful move in this variation and now i wanted to avoid castling at this moment um okay i can castle it probably leads to the same thing but instead i played knight to e5 so this is another important concept that you'll see in the dragon the knight on e5 will often jump into the c4 square um, which is quite a useful square. Um, we also control some of the king side for this move. If white plays f4, we can potentially move to g4. And in general, we want to maybe push our b-pawn up the board or even play queen to a5. So knight to e5 is a normal dragon concept. Pawn to g4. So the race starts. White's going for his king side attack. I'm going to try to generate some counterplay on the queen side now. Otherwise, I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. But I thought I'd show no fear here, and I castle kingside. Now, this looks kind of suicidal, because white's attack is so easy. Bishop h6, h4, h5, open up the h-line, checkmate. But black does have a lot of counterplay based on some ideas on the kingside. 
So, okay, um, White now played h4. One point worth noting here, which is a really important concept, is that if White plays bishop to h6, which we'll see in another model game, Black should just take this bishop off, and after White recaptures, Rook takes c3. And this is a very common exchange sacrifice when our queen comes out and we damage White's pawn structure on the queen side, so we generate enough counterplay. So you've got to remember this concept. Very important to know about this idea. But anyway, White didn't mess about with any of that. H4, straight to the point. And now I play B5. So we can see, really see a race has started. Pawn push, pawn push. What's going to happen? Well, things quickly heat up. Pawn to H5. Here he comes. And now another reason why this knight on F3 is uh, in E5 is good. Well, I've just given it away where it's going to go to, actually. Is now um, a sacrifice. And now I play knight takes f3, which is an important idea. I think this has now been uh, refuted, but it's a very interesting sacrifice. And the idea is that after white takes this knight, we go bishop takes g4, and we have a certain amount of pressure um, on the king side, centre, and queen side. For example, now e4 is possibly um, going to be taken by a black piece. And we've also put our bishop on a better square. I'm not going to recommend this as your main choice because um, Sackis actually showed a very good way that white can play against. this against me and I lost to him horribly in this variation, which we'll come to later on. Um, but this is, the, like I said, the gambler's choice. OK, bishop to e2 was now played. And I considered with b4. So I have sacrificed the piece here, but this is all theory. Knight jumps into the centre, knight to d5. I now went knight takes e4, so we can see at this moment I've got three pawns for the piece, and my dragon bishop, an important piece, has been unleashed against white's queen side. This is one of the main things you want to hold on to in the dragon, your bishop. This is why I put it on g7, to create some threats against white's queen side. Now, extremely complicated position. Now, the best move here is queen takes b4, and my general idea is that this basically refutes um, black's opening when white can take on e4 and even sacrifice his queen in some variations. But we'll come to this later on. My opponent decided not to take this, which looks very risky, as it does open up the b-file. Instead, he played queen to e1. I continued pawn to e6, trying to remove this strong knight and give my queen some potential to come to f6. Knight to f4 was played. And, OK, I threw my queen over to a5 in the end. Queen to a5, another important dragon idea. The queen often comes to the a5 square to increase the pressure on white's queen side. So worth remembering this move. Like I said, it's half an hour game, so not perfect play. But I think black's got a very nice attack here. Some ideas knight c3 check come in, giving up another piece. Knight to d4. So white comes up with a solid defensive plan. He wants to put his knight on b3 to try to soak up some pressure on the queen side. Uh, bishop to f5. I wanted to keep pieces on the board, and now I'm lining up another piece against White's king. I mean, let's just stop for a moment, have a look at where Black's pieces are positioned. Well, they're all pretty much attacking White's king, except for the rook on f8. Every other piece is doing a job. Maybe White should have taken this bishop off now, but he played knight to b3. And this allows a very attractive finish. And after my next move, White, Black, White is completely busted. Um, so I, if I retreat the queen, it gives White some time to get his attack going, um, and basically to consolidate his position. But have a look at these bishops. Bishop on f5, bishop on g7. So we've got to try to use these bishops. Rook takes c2 was a move I played. Killer blow, opening up the king. Um, and really, actually, after this move, like I said, white's completely busted. OK, leaves my queen on pre, which actually white did take my queen. Um, the other option is if white does play king takes c2, well, there's a number of good moves here. One simple idea here is just to play queen takes a2 to stop the white king from retreating. And even though we're a rook and a piece down, so a lot of piece, a lot of material down, white's king is completely busted here. Rook c8 is coming with a nasty discovered check with a knight. There might even be a stronger move than this queen takes a2. So my opponent thought, well, might as well take the queen. So white is a queen and a knight up at the moment. But in the dragon, you have to be a little bit... Sometimes you have to disregard material. You'll see this more and more, especially if you get checkmate. And now, knight to d2 check, leading to checkmate. A lovely blow. 
giving up yet again another piece, but unleashing my bishop on f5 towards white's king. White decided to play queen takes d2, but now it's forced checkmate after rook takes b2 check. My opponent decided to go king to c1. The same move would happen if he goes king to a1. So whichever square he goes to, king to c1, rook to b1, checkmate. And uh, this is quite a nice um, game in the dragon. And if we just look at the final position, we can see the power of black's two bishops. I mean, this dragon bishop on g7 is one important piece that you've got to try to hold on to. So hopefully you're going to have lots of games like this and lots of quick smashing wins in this variation. But you can just see how complicated and exciting the opening is. The concept I want you to learn there is just this idea of counter-attacking on the queen side. And sometimes you have to play very sharply so you don't get blown away on the king side. In this game, black got the attacking first and often that is priority.